We need a societal shift in how we collectively understand and respond to climate change. At the UW Institute for Science and Math Ed, we believe that the PK-12 education system is a leading context for enacting that shift in understanding and response at scale. At the request of Governor Inslee's office, the Washington State Office of the Superintendent of Public Instruction was charged in 2018 with launching a statewide professional learning initiative in science education, emphasizing climate literacy. Members of the UW Institute have worked closely with staff at OSPI to manage and study this effort we call Climb Time. Climb Time is a network of professional learning providers from various community-based organizations and tribal school contexts, as well as science ed leaders from the educational service districts. Since 2018, almost 26,000 teachers from across Washington have participated in Climb Time learning activities using a broad variety of approaches. All professional learning tools, curriculum units, and resources developed through Climb Time are shared as open ed resources for use by others. You can learn more about our work and resources at these websites and media handles. Thanks. What are productive strategies for cultivating the kind of societal transformation needed to respond to climate change? Our approach at the UW Institute for Science and Math Ed is to promote public understanding and climate action through the PK-12 education system. At the request of Governor Inslee's office and with funding from the state of Washington, we launched the Climate Teacher Ed Collaborative earlier this year. We've been supporting faculty from 16 colleges and universities from across the state to integrate climate justice into their teacher ed courses. Our shared aim as a network is to ensure that future teachers are ready to engage youth in community climate justice projects and justice-centered civic participation about the climate crisis. To accomplish this, the research team engages the network in shared learning like through this public webinar series we're hosting with experts who share their approaches. We develop and publish teacher-ed lesson plans as open education resources that can be integrated into coursework, and small groups have formed to collaboratively develop tools and curriculum on a variety of topics that can be broadly used. You can learn more about our work and resources at these websites and Twitter handles. Thanks. Every summer, we backpack across the Olympic Mountains to witness the effects of climate change. Uh, the Lillian Glacier, shown here in 1905, has now all but melted away, as shown by this repeat photo we took on the course in 2015. Smoke from the Queets Rainforest Fire is visible in the background. With the loss of the glaciers comes the endangerment of an entire ecosystem tied to snow. The nocturnal Olympic ice worm is a species that rafted southward from Alaska on the continental ice sheet 17,000 years ago, and it literally cannot survive outside of glacial ice. Today, ice is fragmented into tiny patches, and it can be difficult to tell the difference between temporary snow and the remnants of glaciers. My students and I have found that the presence of ice worms is an incredibly useful tool for tracking the Olympics dying glaciers. Thank you to all of my collaborators, and I hope to continue fruitful collaboration with these folks and other like-minded folks going forward. Hello, I'm Patrick Christie. I'm speaking to you from Chief Leshai Schools, a tribal school in Puyallup, Washington. Tribes are leaders in sailor sea protection and restoration based on treaty rights and sustainability worldview. A powerful way to do this is to engage in participatory co-design projects that engage UW with tribes as full partners to raise awareness about climate and environmental issues. Participatory digital storytelling has shown to be a creative space for this process. We're partnering with Chief Leshi School to create digital stories with faculty members, but these are student stories, not faculty stories. We'll show these digital stories in winter and spring of 2023 and measure the impact on public opinion. In the process, UW students and faculty members learn essential skills and foster deep professional bonds. Deep partnership and trust are key. Eventually, we want to create a community of practice that aligns University of Washington and Canadian universities with the interests and right of indigenous people to protect the Salish Sea. Hello, I'm Gordon Holcreeve, Director of Future Rivers. Future Rivers is a graduate student training program focused on freshwater sustainability. We work with students to do the science that supports healthy, functioning freshwater ecosystems today and for future generations. If you're working in sustainability, there's no avoiding the increasing pressures of climate change on our natural world. And finding interdisciplinary ways to understand and mitigate climate change is at the center of our Future Rivers program. Let me give you one example. Myself and some amazing colleagues have a project in the Lower Mekong Basin where climate change and hydropower are changing the natural flow and temperature regimes of the river. 
our group has been using satellite remote sensing, field studies, and statistics of long-term data to understand how the changes in the physical environment impacts the production of rice and wild fish in Cambodia. From this, river managers can implement programs to manage the river in a way that's better for fish and rice, and ultimately the people of Cambodia. Thanks for listening. We have five researchers who wish to talk about recruitment to a future workforce in climate science. We start with two facts. Number one, the number of students pursuing training in the climate geosciences is declining, even though the number of jobs continues to grow. And number two, participation of underrepresented minorities in the geosciences lags trends in STEM and in the population as a whole. The future marine geoscience workforce in particular needs to reflect today's and the future's demographic diversity. And that's because marine policy and management are much more likely to reflect the knowledge, interest and will of impacted communities. Community colleges are an important route to STEM careers for underserved students of very high potential. Therefore, we've developed a recruitment program for community college students that involves field-based component that um, focuses on key issues of local environmental importance, nests relevant quantitative learning, and provides professional mentoring in the year beyond. 